Our questions really began at Brown Venture Group from a place of how is it possible that all the women and all the folks of color are getting such a small percentage of the overall investment? How is that even possible? Good morning. Right now, globally, the world is 90% non-white, right? And 50% women. I mean, let's just, just let that thought resonate for just a moment. There is a real wealth gap in America, one that corresponds with race. And now a new report is revealing just how wide that gap truly is. The report by McKinsey & Company shows a stunning wage gap totaling billions of dollars and a revenue gap of more than a trillion dollars for black owned businesses. My definition of justice is replacing human suffering with human flourishing in Jesus' name. I spent a great deal of my life in vocational ministry, and even the things that I did that were not directly vocational ministry, in my mind, were kind of vocational ministry. So I worked in juvenile corrections, worked in Minneapolis public schools, was on pastoral staff of multiple churches. So I've had a lot of ministry experience, but I come from a very strong, smart group of Jamaican folks, and there was just something really, really untrue about the Western missiological narrative, the thought that the West to the rest, right? And so therefore, I've been on a life mission, really, to figure out, like, how do we properly bring the gospel to folks in a way that retains their human dignity? And at the end of all of my various things that I did in my career, business was the best solution by far. I was a youth pastor at a church, did leadership development, discipleship development, things of that nature. But I always had this passion for entrepreneurship that seemed to be in conflict as well. You know, you hear stories about folks working 30 to 40 years in a corporate America, and they sell it all to go in the full-time ministry. Everybody's praising God and clapping their hands, but you don't hear people saying, you know, I worked 20 years in traditional ministry, and then I sold it all and became an investor. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't hear that. So that was a journey for me that I had to take. A lot of times we don't talk about the gap between white and people of color. There's a huge gap in multiple different fronts, education, capital, financing, housing, and it's time to stop it. My name is Amy Langer, and I am an entrepreneur. More protests and uprisings are expected in Minnesota and across the country. With the murder of George Floyd, I think there's an awakening that is happening or starting to happen. And I think Minnesota is a place that the rest of the world is looking to, to see what's happening here and what are we going to do. And that's why I'm actually super excited about the work that they're doing, because I feel feel like this can be a start and be a model, a model for a lot of us to make a difference that's needed. Amy Langer is one of our investors. Um, she is very remarkable. Uh, she's not only remarkable as a human, she's a remarkable leader. She has built a company that is over a hundred million dollar company. She has a really strong brand and reputation both in our metro area and nationally. She's just a really unique woman, and we have the deepest respect for her. They've got a lot of grit. They've got a lot of passion. Um, I just felt that there was a lot of resiliency, and foremost is kind of their curiosity, asking questions, trying to figure out what would it take to not only make Brown Venture Group work, but then all the entrepreneurs that touch Brown Venture Group. And that's exciting. You could read hundreds of books on what it's like to be in the venture capital space. I know over a lot of them. Um, but none of them are going to be written from the lens of a, a person of color. There is best practices. Uh, Dr. Brooks likes to say they're not best practices, they're existing practices. If they are best practices, they would work for everybody. We had to create a whole different model because accelerators don't always work for people of color. We felt like God wanted to make sure that his image bearers had access to capital, so that's how we started Brown Venture Group. 
We are an LLC that has a brand new fund. We set a $50 million goal. We went and asked people to entrust their resources to us to invest those resources to bring a financial return and an impact return. Venture capital is a $70 trillion industry. And when we looked at the data, something like 92 to 95% of that $70 trillion economy was going only to white male entrepreneurs. And then the rest of the pie was being split between everybody else. Change has been very slow because this particular ecosystem is extremely resilient against outsiders coming in. In Brown Venture Group, we think of it as an expanding pie. And if it's an expanding pie, that means you don't have to be so hyper-protective of your piece of the pie. Our investment thesis is Black, Latinx, and Indigenous technology entrepreneurs. So when we think about our investment thesis, we think about finding founders who have ideas that with proper investment and the right relationships and the proper business scaffolding, they can scale those things and exit and in the process, enormous amounts of jobs will be created, enormous amounts of economic and human flourishing will be created, and in the final analysis, the world will literally be a different place. Everyone wants human flourishing. I think that the team has access to opportunities that a lot of traditional white investment groups don't see. I think they're trusted in the community and I think the people that they do their due diligence on and put money behind, they'll be able to help open doors and I think we're gonna see an exponential return. Every investor wants to find an undervalued asset that they can grow with and as it turns out, as a result of uh, generational wealth gaps and biases in the marketplace, there was a pent up demand with great ideas that were undervalued that we can invest in to get onto the playing field, so to speak. The system has been structured so that if you can't raise a friends and family round of investment, you're locked out completely. We knew we needed to create an entry point for folks who had been completely locked out forever. For a lot of founders, especially founders of color, they don't have someone who can offer $50,000 to help them build their idea or $100,000 to build a technology product. My name is Jazz Hampton. I'm one of the co-founders, CEO, and general counsel of TurnSignal. When we started raising money, we didn't have a product built yet. And so having those conversations during that round when Brown Venture Group joined us was, hey, this is where we're going to go, and this is how we're going to do it, and here's the roadmap to do so. But we don't have the money yet. With a traffic stop that escalated with a tragic ending. A group of local men want to change that with a new cell phone app. WCCO's Aaron Hassanza explains how Turn Signal aims to get drivers and police home safely. Turn Signal is an app that you can have on your phone, and when you're pulled over or in an accident, you either use voice activation and press one button, and it instantly starts recording with that front-facing camera of your phone, and video conferences a lawyer to be in the car with you 24-7, 365. And our mission is simple, and it's three-pronged. It's to protect drivers' rights, to de-escalate these roadside interactions, and third and most importantly, is to ensure both drivers and law enforcement return home safe at the end of every day. We were born out of the tragedies here in Minnesota of Philando Castile, Dante Wright, George Floyd. And we know the disproportionate effect that police stops can have on communities of color. Folks of color need capital. Jazz is a really, really great entrepreneur. The company that he founded called Turn Signal, it's going to save a lot of lives. There are not easy answers to solve deep, historic, intergenerational poverty in communities. Nonetheless, we must lean in. If in fact we are who we say we are as people of faith, or even if you're just a person of goodwill, you have to lean in. We imagine a future state of the world that's radically different from what exists today, where human flourishing in communities of color is the norm, not the exception. We imagine African-American folks who have enormous amounts of wealth and African-American communities that are really healthy and vibrant and where flourishing is unavoidable. So if you want to be on God's side, you have to be on the side of human flourishing. And you have to be on the side of human flourishing for all of humanity. <laughs>